guys, so for today's video, I have my September BoxyCharm base box and my premium box. Uh, we barely made it under the wire in terms of filming in September because uh, these boxes took their sweet time uh, getting to me. So I've already applied kind of some base makeup. I have a foundation, concealer, a little bit of contour, uh, and I wanted to demo some of these products in the video. Uh, so I'll tell you what I received in each box and then pick out the items that I'm going to try. So let's talk about the base box first. So I believe this retails for about $25 a month and you get five full-size items. Uh, I think I have the first variation. It's 2109001-BA. So that's kind of how I read it, but I could be wrong. Uh, so let's talk about the first item. So this is the Blink Glow Getter Face Palette, and I think this is the item I selected. Uh, it says it's a boxy exclusive, has a recommended retail price of $50, uh, and it says it features four smooth matte blushes and four luminous highlighters in beautiful sophisticated shades that enhance all skin tones for a personalized youthful glow. The formulas are refined to blend effortlessly and last all day so you can glow and get it. So uh, that is what the palette looks like. It has a mirror that has a little protector on it. So it looks very pretty in the pan, so I'm excited to uh, try out those blushes. Uh, next up we have the Elena Badro Baby Blues set. So again, this is a boxy exclusive and it's supposed to have a recommended retail price of $58. So this is what it looks like. It comes in like a little, I guess, faux suede pouch. It says, this set masterfully creates a seamlessly flawless makeup application. Contour, blend, and define with these three limited edition decadent synthetic makeup brushes. Travel or store your brushes in style with a luxurious tan pouch. And to be honest, I think I enjoy the pouch more than the actual brushes. Uh, so I think it is faux suede, but it does feel very nice. It has the embossing on the uh, pouch there. Uh, and it's just some kind of fabric that I guess they were able to cut it without it fraying. So it's just kind of stitched down the side. And then these are the uh, three brushes. So I don't think there's any kind of labeling or anything on them. I'm guessing they're referring to this one when they talk about contouring, but I think I'll use this one for blush. It looks like more of a traditional uh, blush brush to me. Um, so they're very soft, a little kind of flimsy, floppy, but at least they're soft. So there's that kind of cheek brush, and then it looks like this is a blender brush. Again, it doesn't have any kind of defined use, really. Uh, and then this one is like a little angled brush, so you could use it for brows, or uh, I like to use little angled brushes like this to kind of smudge out eyeliner. Uh, so three little brushes. I don't know that I would assign a $58 value to these, but... Uh, there you go. Uh, and then next up we have the Dr. Brandt Triple Antioxidant Eye Cream. Uh, this is supposed to be a new launch, has a retail value of $46. It says it's formulated with Dr. Brandt's revolutionary A3 Power, a dynamic shield boosted with antioxidant, age defense, and anti-stress ingredients. It's designed to help the look of fine lines and prevent first signs of skin aging, protect against free radicals and external aggressors, as well as moisturize. So I'm glad we're at least getting some moisturization in an eye cream. Uh, so this is half an ounce, which is kind of the standard eye cream, comes in a little tube like so. And I'm just going to try the texture on the back of my hand. I've already uh, applied my skincare and everything, so so it feels nice. I mean, feels nice and emollient. So I don't know what else there's to say really about an eye cream that I haven't really tried for any length of time, but uh, I'll probably be able to get some good use out of that. I don't think I'll have to buy an eye cream for quite a while at this point. It has a slight scent to it. it has mineral salts down at the very bottom, which is interesting. Uh, the first few ingredients are water, glycerin, isopropyl palmitate, 
It has a silicone ingredient, squalane, which I love. It has willow bark extract, which is interesting because that's usually like an exfoliant type ingredient. Ascorbic acid, rose extract. I'm not seeing fragrance on the list, but that's not to say that it doesn't include fragrance. So anyway, that's a decent kind of skincare item. Uh, and the next thing we have is the Saint Lux Brow Gel. Uh, and this has a retail value of $22. It says, bow down to your brows. This brow gel glides on effortlessly, leaving your brows looking fuller and giving them the perfect shape. The short brow brush gives you precise placement of your brows and the lightweight gel has no residue when dry. So I guess I'll go ahead and give this a shot. Uh, it has, I think very kind of sophisticated packaging. It kind of reminds me of All Saints with that black on the gray background and of course the name. So I haven't done anything to my brows. It's very kind of basic black packaging there. And let's see what the uh, spoolie looks like. Okay, so it's, it's quite small. It's um, very kind of short and fat. So it has that kind of conical shape to it, but uh, the bristles are a bit longer and a bit more kind of widely spaced than uh, like the Benefit Gimme Brow. So I'm pretty sure this is clear. It doesn't feel super goopy or anything as I'm applying it. I think I managed to kind of take a chunk out of this eyebrow while I was dermaplaning earlier. So if this one looks a little bit weird, that's not their fault. Uh, I mean, it seems fine. I don't have any kind of immediate negative reaction to it. We'll see kind of how well it holds um, after it's had a chance to dry. Uh, and again, that's supposed to retail for $22. The last item here is the insert name here, Quick Slick Hair Essence. Uh, so that is what the packaging looks like. Uh, this is supposed to have a retail value of uh, $22 also. Uh, it says Quick Slick is designed to quickly and easily touch up your hair. No alcohol, safe for sensitive scalps, non-irritating, non-flaking essence to slick and smooth your baby hairs and flyaways with a light peach scent. So that's interesting that they chose to scent this product. Uh, so this one is actually kind of shrink wrapped inside the box. I think the packaging does feel a bit nicer than this um, All Saints Brow Gel. Um, not that that matters a whole lot. Okay, so this has, oh, I don't like that. I can kind of smell the peach underneath. It smells like to me, like if you're cooking something savory and it has peach in it, but then it also has like a lot of like other herbs and spices. It doesn't, I don't know that it smells good, but it doesn't, it doesn't smell like straight up peach either. And it also has a very interesting like curved wand to it like a rubberized curved wand. So I guess they curved it to like fit your scalp, I guess. Uh, my hair is still, I think, pretty damp. So I'm gonna save this to the end um, for when I take off uh, the headband. So as far as this box goes, um, like I said, I chose the Blink palette and we'll try out one of those blushes in a minute here. So I think this is a decent box. Uh, I think my one criticism would be that including a hair essence and a brow gel in the same box seems a little repetitive. So it made me think of this e.l.f. by Jen Atkin product. Um, this is their, what was it, hair and brow pomade. So I think this is discontinued, but it was an interesting product because it had a little comb like so. So it was meant to be for both your brows and any flyaways, which I thought was interesting because it was this kind of fusion of uh, like a makeup brand and a hairstylist. So I thought it was really clever that they did this. So I keep this in my bathroom because I do, I think prefer it as a kind of flyaway tamer rather than a brow gel. So I understand that like the brush makes a huge difference as well as kind of the hold level of the formula in terms of people's preference and what's better for your brows versus flyaways, that sort of thing. But in terms of including two kind of clear hair holding type products in one box, it just seemed a little, a little redundant. Okay. So like I said, I will try out the, uh, hair essence and the blink face palette 
uh, and the brushes as well. Uh, so the eye cream as a skincare product is just kind of pointless for me to um, try that out. Okay, so that was it for my base box. Uh, let's talk about premium, shall we? So uh, I wanted to start off by saying that I think that this will be my last premium box for at least a little while. Uh, it's entirely possible that I will resubscribe, but uh, the interesting thing about Boxy that um, is different from Ipsy anyway, uh, is that you go in and customize before they bill you, so you have the ability to see at least, I guess, two of the products that you would be getting out of six full-size products uh, before you're billed. So you can kind of get a little preview and decide if it's you know, something you're interested in and then cancel if you um, so choose. Um, so as I mentioned, you get six full-size products and this retails for $35. Hey guys, um, just popping on to say that after I filmed uh, this video, uh, Boxy did announce that they will be increasing the price of their premium box by about $5. Uh, so my reason for canceling wasn't because of that price increase, but I'm definitely glad that I did uh, already cancel it. And uh, as you can see, they've promised kind of new features and perks for Boxy Premium. Uh, but I think I'll just kind of wait and see uh, whether those perks would justify a $40 a month subscription box, um, which is really getting quite high. Uh, I think the um, Glam Bag Plus is going up to $28. Um, so yeah, I think for the time being, I will just keep my, my boxy base box. And uh, the two items for next month included the LYS bronzer, uh, which I already have. So I'll go ahead and apply this today just for the sake of demoing it, but that was one item. They also had a Rowan brow product, and I think they only had like two out of three shades. They didn't have the lightest shade available. If I'd been able to choose one of those brow products that would have worked for me, I might have kept the premium uh, subscription for October, but as I said, I think the lightest shade was uh, unavailable. Uh, so I was stuck with getting kind of a repeat of this. Uh, and they had the Lily Lashes like eyelash growth serum. And I have numerous lash serums now and I am not very good about using any of them. So I figured that would be kind of uh, a waste of a product as well. So I skipped out on that, uh, saved the $35 for next month. Although um, this month is actually a fairly decent box. So it wasn't a reaction to this box that made me cancel. It was what was coming uh, down the pike. So I didn't mention this with the um, base box, but they have stopped including those kind of foam inserts uh, that they used to include in boxes. They've gone to this just kind of generic uh, bubble wrap, I assume because it's cheaper. I don't have strong feelings about that other than the foam seemed a little bit more protective. I don't think I've ever had an issue with anything breaking in a boxy charm, but I guess it was nice knowing that it had that layer of cushion. Uh, I think I kept most, if not all, of those foam inserts for when we eventually move, eventually. <laughs> uh, but now at least I don't have to worry about kind of figuring out where to store those foam inserts. Uh, so yeah, so this one had kind of a generic layer of bubble wrap and then it had this kind of flattened piece of paper. Uh, and this variation was 287, I believe. Oh, and one thing I also wanted to note is that the choice and the add-on window opened before I received this premium box. Uh, so like I said, I was waiting for a fairly long time. Uh, I think they used to ship with FedEx, but now it seems like they've kind of moved on to USPS kind of serviced by Pitney Bowes. And I don't know, it just took forever. So. There are some things in here that I was actually hoping to get, and I was debating whether to purchase them in the add-on store, but I told myself to wait and not do it. But I might have ordered other things if I had known exactly what I was getting, so I don't know. I ended up not placing an order during that particular um, add-on window. Okay, so the first item that I chose was the Fenty Beauty Snap Shadows Mix and Match Eyeshadow Palette. This has a retail value of $25, uh, and I got the shade Two Cool Neutrals. They had a few different uh, palette options available. Uh, and it says it's a game-changing portable eyeshadow palette, 
of six rich blendable shades in a range of matte to shimmer finishes. Snap together any two palettes to double your collection while keeping it perfectly compact. That's 12 of your fave shades all in the palm of your hand. And I know they've kind of continued this like snap feature with their holiday release because I guess the holiday release is like twice as long so you can snap one of these to the back. I don't know, I think it's a little bit more gimmicky than functional maybe. Uh, but I am excited to try these. Uh, it has a nice mirror, it says Fenty Beauty on it, and then like it says, those are fairly cool toned shades. So I will be using that today. I haven't heard great things about this to be honest, but I'm interested in trying it for myself. And I'm also planning to do kind of a full face of Fenty coming up at some point. I just placed an order during their kind of friends and family sale. Uh, so glad to be able to try it, even if it doesn't have like the greatest kind of reputation or anything. Uh, let's see, the next thing I chose was the Laura Mercier Soothing Eye Makeup Remover. So this has a retail value of $27. It says a gentle eye makeup remover that effectively removes eye makeup. And this is one of the bi-phase ones that you shake uh, and then you dispense onto like a cotton round to uh, take off your eye makeup. Uh, it has a pretty cool like pattern to it. I'm not sure if it's gonna pick up on camera. So this is 100 ml or 3.4 fluid ounce. So not the biggest, you know, bottle of eye makeup remover. Uh, and this isn't the most probably exciting product, but you know, it's something that I will, I'm sure, use eventually. Uh, so in that way, it was good just to get kind of a, a staple product. I don't remember what the other choices are, but it couldn't have been that exciting. Uh, next up, we have the Bloom Effects Tulip Dew Mist. This is a new launch, has a retail value of $34. It says it's a multitasking face mist that delivers a brightening boost of antioxidants, plant extracts, and vitamins B3, C, D, and E to revitalize, refresh, and energize. It's designed to work as a humectant to prevent moisture loss. Plus, it's formulated with environmentally conscious BOV technology. That's capital B, lowercase o, capital V. Uh, a first of its kind for clean beauty. Perfect on bare skin, over makeup, or throughout the day as an awakening skin pick-me-up. Uh, so I guess I'll go ahead and spray this again. I sprayed it on my bare face uh, before I started. And it has one of those type of nozzles, so I think it's like a, like a continuous spray type things. Uh, and it says it is fragrance free. So I think those of you who enjoy a mist will probably enjoy this. It does have a scent, but again, it's supposed to be fragrance free. So uh, I'm not sure what the natural ingredients are. And I do have kind of a natural affinity for this brand because um, tulips are my favorite flower. I don't know if tulips as a plant have any actual skincare benefits compared to other flowers, but I don't know, it's a nice little, can of spray here. This is 2.8 ounces or 80 mil. Uh, so this is one of the items I was looking forward to trying uh, and I was thinking of picking up in the add-on store but I again held off. I think uh, another Bloom Effects um, product was in an earlier box if I'm not mistaken like that jelly type product. So it'll be interesting to see if they show up again in the future. Okay, so next item here. I think this is something that everyone got, and again, this was something I was thinking of picking up. Uh, this is the Beauty Bakery Milk and Honey Highlighting Palette. This retails for $38. It says, so creamy, you don't need butter. You'll be all the sugar after you milk that glow with these silky smooth milk and honey highlighters. Grab your bakeware and strobe, mix, or layer in abundance. So that kind of gold honeycomb design is a little sleeve there, so I'll probably hang on to that because it's cute. Uh, and then that is the actual palette. Uh, so it has a honeycomb pattern again on the inside, and then it has uh, four shades. 
Uh, only one of these will probably work for me as an actual highlighter. These two in the corners will probably work as blush toppers. Uh, this one maybe is an eyeshadow depending on how pigmented it is, but uh, I think this was the like best highlighter for the Allure 2020 Best of Beauty. So uh, yeah, it's a product I've kind of had my eye on, but I haven't actually picked up in the past. Uh, so that is the fourth product. Okay, so the fifth product is the Complex Culture Beauty Sonic T-Bar Facial Massager. This is supposed to have a $58 value. It says the Sonic Power Tool delivers a modern facial massage to increase blood flow, reduce puffiness, relieve facial tension, and help tone facial contours. Give yourself the daily luxury of an at-home massage to temporarily smooth and sculpt skin. Rejuvenate and sculpt your skin in just a matter of minutes whenever you can squeeze it into your routine. This one that I'm holding up, <laughs> I've actually had for a while. I think I got it in an Ipsy bag. Uh, and this is the one that came in this BoxyCharm. So I think Ipsy now owns BoxyCharm, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so that would explain why there might be kind of some overlap products. Uh, but that is what that looks like. It's pretty small. So it does require one AA battery that is not included. So it has a battery in there. I'm not sure if the battery has died. It's not like the most, I don't know, refined product, I would say. I think the $58 value is a bit high. Yeah, that battery might have died. Uh, so I replaced the battery. I don't know if that was the issue or if I was just not doing it properly. Uh, so you twist the base to turn it on, but you want to make sure you want to make sure you're just tw twisting that bottom bit and not the whole kind of rose gold section because that'll unscrew it to replace the battery. That is what it sounds like. You know, just kind of a light vibration, nothing crazy. Uh, so I, like I said, got this in an MC a while ago and I haven't, <laughs> haven't really been using it. So it's not really a huge value add to me, uh, but I do have an extra one now, so I will be including that in an upcoming giveaway. Uh, and then the last product here is the Verb Ghost Oil. Uh, this is two flu downs or 60 mil. Uh, this is supposed to have an $18 value. Uh, it says it's a smoothing Moringa blend and weightless hair oil. This weightless hair oil revitalizes strands from root to ends. Powered by Moringa oil, this blend works to hydrate and fight frizz. It's proven to enhance shine by 75% in a third-party lab testing setting after applying to dry human hair fibers. Okay, I don't know that you need to like do that kind of test for a hair product like this, but anyway. Uh, I guess I can apply some to my ends here. Uh, my hair is still kind of a little damp. So it just comes with a little nozzle. Oh, it's pretty thick, actually. Um, it smells nice, nothing too strong. It's probably gonna be too much. Uh, so, you know, this was a product I was kind of pleased to see. Hair oil isn't something I use a whole lot because I find that it's a little easy to go overboard, but uh, um, but it wasn't something I was like super bummed about either. Okay, so that's it for kind of the overview of the products. Now I have greasy hands. Okay, so I'm going to be using the eyeshadow palette and the highlighter palette from the premium, and then I have the brushes and this blush palette. Uh, the bronzer from LYS, as I mentioned. I'll try to use this after I take out my headband and then these brushes. I think that's it. All right, so just to quickly demo this, make sure it's all kind of shaken up. Uh, I'm going to apply just some Urban Decay 24-7 eye pencil to the back of my hand and then make sure this is again shaken up and I just have a little cotton here and we'll see okay 
I mean, that wasn't like a super scent pencil or anything, but as far as kind of rudimentary tests seem to seem to pass. So like I said, I'm sure I'll be able to use that in the future. Okay, so let's start on the eyes. So uh, I'm gonna start with the Fenty primer. Eye primer only seems fitting, right? If these shadows can't perform well with their own eye primer, you know, they only have really themselves to blame, right? Okay, so I don't remember exactly what the criticisms of the shadow were, but I'm just going to go ahead and set using the uh, By Terry Hydro Powder and this little e.l.f. brush, just so we don't have any like sticking issues. Okay, so again, that is the palette. Like I said, there were a couple of different options available and I wasn't sure exactly which one to select, but I ended up going for this one. Uh, so I think I'm gonna go into that kind of matte shade on the top and taking my MAC 286. Okay, so so far these are applying kind of lightly. I just watched um, Angelica Nyquist's um, video reviewing the um, Beauty Bay Disney collection and I thought it was interesting because she was talking about how the people who seem to like the Beauty Bay formula, they tend to apply it to a kind of sticky base and they start with the darker shades and then blend I guess the lighter shades on top. I'm just going in with that same shade on a refer number 15 brush which as you can see is kind of a denser brush. The other one was more of a kind of duo fiber. Uh, so it was interesting to hear that perspective. I haven't tried any Beauty Bay palettes, although I am thinking of purchasing the Disney collection. I haven't, haven't decided to do so yet. Um, but yeah, it was just interesting hearing that. So I definitely like the way this is applying better with this kind of more dense brush. Sometimes you just don't know quite what you're going to get with a new formula. Um, my Chikokoto GSM 9, which still has a little bit of pigment on it. But yeah, Angelica was saying how like her preference, I think, is more like mine. I think she sets her primer and then she prefers to start kind of with the lighter shades and build. Uh, so I'm gonna go into that shade in the corner there. This is just a dry, oh, okay. Had these brushes out and I completely forgot. Um, hmm. Okay, maybe I'll have to use this in a second. Okay, so using this to apply the light shade. I mean, it gives a nice sheen. If they're kind of marketing these as shadows that are easy to kind of take on the go because they clip together. I can understand having something that's a bit more, it's a bit lower in pigment, easier to blend. Uh, going in with that kind of more silvery shade. So yeah, so these aren't like crazy pigmented, but Sometimes that comes down to preference. And there are some other kind of luxury brands uh, that people really like and usually speak highly of that are not super pigmented. Like um, Charlotte Tilbury's formula is not crazy pigmented for the most part, going into that uh, middle matte shade with the refer number 23 and taking that underneath the lower lash line. Okay, just because I'm playing around, like I think this is, this would be a fine look. Uh, I'm gonna go with this brush and go back into that middle matte shade. It has a very kind of flat surface on this brush, which is interesting. Again, it's very soft. Might be good for kind of blending. All right, so taking that MAC 
duo fiber brush and going into the darkest matte. It's a very neutral palette aside from that one kind of bright purple really. So I'm just gonna kind of feather that. I mean, we also have like the expectation issue in terms of like, I was expecting the shadows to be awful and they're not like, how does that affect my opinion? We know you all are the type that you prefer to be disappointed in something or um, if you would rather be like pleasantly surprised. So I'm just gonna go into this brush again without any more kind of product on it. Uh, I usually check like Rotten Tomatoes for uh, movie reviews. There's usually like a range percentage wise of movies I would be willing to sit through um, either in person or at home, although I'm not really going to the movie theaters recently. Like a movie that has 60% um, may still be very enjoyable to watch. Um, just loading that up and I'm going to spray it with this since I have it. Uh, it may still be enjoyable to watch and you may like that type of movie and really enjoy it. And so you have a great time watching it versus like what the critics, you know, kind of rate it as. Uh, there's also some movies that, you know, may get like a 90 or whatever, but they're just a little bit more, I don't know, serious or heavy and, uh, you know, you don't really enjoy it. I usually check just to have a sense of like what I'm getting myself into. But I think for the most part, I would rather kind of go in thinking, okay, this movie, you know, got kind of middling reviews and then end up really enjoying it. Uh, so that I think is gonna do it for this palette. I think I'm gonna tap over it with this um, spoiler alert shade or what do we have in this blink palette? Just to show you these kind of side by side. Get the highlighters in frame. Uh, I'm gonna go in with this spoiler alert shade and just tap that onto the lid. I like a really kind of bright lid highlight. I have a little bit of fallout. I don't know if that was the highlighter or the eyeshadow. Uh, but I like a really kind of bright pop on the eyelid because, you know, my eyes are a bit more deep set and hooded and having that to kind of bring them forward, I think really helps. Okay, so I think we'll call it there. I think I'm gonna go in with this Urban Decay Rockstar shade and then I'll be using this little brush to kind of blend out that liner. I think this is a purple liner, but it's not like super purple. So it reads a little bit more kind of gray. And I think I'll try loading up this brush just by running it across and seeing if I can get a little bit of a wing. I do have hooded eyes, but I just do kind of like the barest baby wings so that you can kind of see the full thing when they're open. I don't really want to do the thing where you like create, <laughs> was it a bat wing they call it? I would just assume it have normal liner. I have to say Urban Decay's eyeliners are still really hard to beat. I know Urban Decay kind of has fallen a little bit in people's, you know, hierarchy of brands recently, but if you like a good kind of gel pencil eyeliner, it's definitely worth at least trying them out. I know they're often like 50% off. You can kind of try a few shades out. They have lots of fun colors. They have neutrals. I mean, what more do you want really? They last. They're also really creamy, so you can kind of blend them. 
Okay, so like I said, just a tiny little flick on the outside corner, and I think, you know, this brush did a great job with that, so well done brush. Uh, so I just applied um, some mascara. I used my Old Faithful Heart Lights Camera Splashes, which is a waterproof version of their Lights Camera Lashes. So I think all we have left is bronzer, blush, and highlight, and then I'll throw something on the lips. Uh, so using the LYS bronzer, I have the shade Motivate which is their lightest shade, I believe. Uh, I filmed a whole video on their kind of initial products. I know they just came out with some new ones. Uh, so if you're kind of curious, like what my thoughts are, uh, it wasn't the most glowing video, to be honest. Uh, I think this bronzer is fine. I don't really have anything negative to say about it. I'm applying it with my refer number 22 brush here. I think their foundation is kind of you know, the product I was least excited about. But uh, yeah, I'd say if you're getting this in an upcoming premium box, you know, I wouldn't worry. It's, it's a decent bronzer if you like the shade. So it wasn't like a rejection of LYS that caused me to cancel. Uh, going in next with the Blink Blush Palette. Those are the shades. I do like a good blush palette because usually I do my eyes first and then I kind of tailor my blush shade to what I am wearing. So using this little brush, I'm gonna go into Talented first, which is that kind of, I don't know, rose shade, would you call it? So I'm not sure exactly. So that definitely applied product. can't say I love that brush or anything. Uh, I'm going to go in with my refer number five on the uh, other cheek just to kind of see. The thing I like about this is that it kind of has a graduated um, like slope where the brushes are kind of tapering so it's a little bit easier to just kind of you know paint that on. So maybe that's a little bit more subtle of an application. I mean, these definitely show up, so there's no no shortage of pigment there. I might have to go over that a little bit. It's always a balancing act between making sure things show up on camera and, you know, not looking like a clown. Uh, I'm gonna take my BK102 and the Charlotte Tilbury powder and just kind of, oof, that kicked up a lot. Um, Ooh, I just hit pan. Boy, this brush really destroyed that product. Okay, I think that helped tone things down a bit. Uh, and then for highlighter, using my Anastasia A23 brush and this Beauty Bakery palette. So going into the same shade, I kind of dusted onto the eyelid. It's nice, it's not quite as beaming as I thought it would be, but it definitely has a nice shine to it. And again, that's the um, lightest shade in the palette. All right, so let's apply some Fenty Gloss Balm, shall we? Okay, so I'm gonna use the shade Fussy. This isn't my favorite gloss formula, but I don't hate it. And they have a lot of fun colors. Um, I think I prefer the Pat McGrath glosses to this one. So uh, that is the finished look. Let's take the hair down. Uh, so because my hair is naturally wavy, I do tend to get a fair bit of like frizziness and stuff around my crown. So I can try this out where that happens. I mean, part of the reason I have my hair in the headband when I'm getting ready is that it kind of helps uh, control that. Uh, so you can kind of see, hopefully, those baby hairs there. And let's see if I can kind of... I mean, it definitely applies gel. The thing about products like this, though, is that you don't want it to look like you have a... Uh, something about Mary moment, if you know what I mean. So there's definitely a fine line between 
cold and you know looking really kind of fake feeling very very 90s right now with this kind of like you know elevated look to the the front part of my hair. Uh, so while that's drying, because I canceled my premium, uh, I thought I would tell you about another subscription box that I ordered recently uh, in case you are also contemplating canceling yours and uh, you might be interested in exploring some alternative uh, subscriptions. So I found out about this through the Instagram account Beauty Deals BFF, which is a great account, but you may need to, you know, lock your credit card up. <laughs> Uh, because she put some really tempting deals on it. Uh, but anyway, this is a relatively new subscription box. I think it's been out a few months now. Uh, this is the American Influencer Beauty Bundle, I think it is. It's nice holographic packaging. And I think Alexandria Ryan has already kind of filmed a video about this. Uh, but like I said, I think it is $35 a month. And the interesting thing about this particular subscription is that each month is entirely devoted to a different brand. So you can look on their website to kind of see which brands they featured in the past. Uh, for the month of September, it was Herbivore, which is a brand that I was interested in exploring more from. So I'll show you the products that came in here, but it was a really great value for um, $35. Uh, I did already cancel this one as well uh, because the October brand is ColourPop. And while I like ColourPop, I wasn't really sure what the value would be in receiving an all ColourPop box. So I'm kind of curious to see what comes in it, uh, but I didn't want to gamble $35 on a ColourPop box. So with this one, I was able to see everything that was in the box uh, before purchasing it. And I think everyone got the exact same thing. Uh, so this has the Coco Rose Coconut Oil Body Polish, which I was interested in trying. This is eight ounces and it has a retail value of $36. Okay, so I think this is sealed. I'm just gonna leave it as is for now and I'll probably report back in an empties, but I do go through body scrub fairly frequently. So that was a product I was definitely interested in. Uh, next there is the Pink Cloud uh, Rose Water and Tremella creamy jelly cleanser. This has a $24 value. And uh, this was another product. I think I saw Hiram kind of say it was a pretty decent cleanser after watching some celebrity use it. So um, has a really nice kind of luxe glass pump bottle. Um, so if you wanted something kind of nice to have out on your vanity. So I haven't tried most of these products yet, but that's kind of the whole point of purchasing the box, right? Uh, next up, we have the Bacuchiol Retinol Alternative uh, Smoothing Serum. This is one fluid ounce. This is supposed to have a retail value of $54. Uh, so this is, like I said, it's a retinol alternative. This one has that purple color to it. I really enjoy Herbivore's aesthetic. Uh, I'm not sure if, you know, what's inside the bottles will always be my favorite, but I do enjoy their kind of aesthetic. Uh, this product I've already tried. This is the Blue Tansy Resurfacing Clarity Mask. It has a $48 value. And it's interesting because it is a little bit more green in person than you might expect from a name like Blue Tansy. Uh, I think that's natural. There's just like some natural color variation in the product. Uh, it says it gently clarifies the skin with BHAs from white willow bark fruit enzymes along with aloe and blue tansy essential oil to soothe the appearance of redness and irritation. So I have used this once and um, I don't know if you can kind of see the color. I mean, it's a little bit kind of like creature from the black lagoon swampy type color. I have dry skin. I don't have overly sensitive skin. I think from just using it once, all I can say is it has a pretty potent smell to it. I don't know if it's the blue tansy. It's not something I hate, but it's definitely there. So if you don't like skincare to have any kind of scent to it, you probably wouldn't like this. It just went on kind of like a, like an aloe gel, kind of the almost clear layer on the skin. Uh, didn't have any kind of reaction to it. Didn't notice anything remarkable about it. So 
uh, I'll continue using that and, and see how it goes. Uh, and then the last product here was the Lapis Facial Oil, which comes in a little dropper like this. This is supposed to have a $72 value. Uh, it says it has a component called azulene, which is known to soothe dry or irritated skin, reduce the appearance of redness, and leave the skin feeling more balanced. Uh, so I got their, their like hemp oil in I think an Ipsy, uh, and I saw I think this was one of the options and I was kind of intrigued by it. So uh, yeah, I like a good facial oil now and then to kind of add an extra layer of hydration and all that um, at the end of the night. So I was excited to have an opportunity uh, to try that as well. So I think this box is sold out. The next month's box will be ColourPop. But I just wanted to kind of put this on your radar if it wasn't already in terms of like an alternative at the same price point uh, to BoxyCharm. Uh, so I think that is it. Yeah, now that that's dried, I think you definitely can see a little bit of like, hopefully like separation. So I think if you're at all concerned about like thinning hair or anything like that, this may kind of exacerbate that. If you are pulling your hair back into a bun or something and you just want to make sure everything is tamed down, uh, it may not kind of, it may look a little bit better because you're just kind of smoothing over the top of the hair. Uh, but anyway, those are my boxy charms for the month of September. <laughs> Uh, I am kind of relieved that in October I will only be getting one box, so I only have to worry about tracking one and waiting to film this type of video for one box instead of two. Uh, but like I said, I'll probably get FOMO at some point and resubscribe. So, so let me know if you all are subscribed to BoxyCharm, if you've been enjoying your boxes for the last couple of months, and please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.